Hello, 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 and welcome back to Bumblebee, my faithful viewers, and I hope you're ready to get grisly because our video today is the top 10 spine-chilling ways women were punished in medieval times. All right, so the entertainment value of this vid is definitely gonna come from how nauseating some of these are for me to talk about, such as the first one to make me puke, number 10, denailing. It's one of those torment styles I feel needs no explanation. The name kind of says it all, but to include you in the horror, the definition of denailing is the forcible extraction of fingernails or toenails or both. And man, was it a favorite method of the medieval times. And a fun fact I learned, the term cutting it to the quick actually originates with this horrible punishment. The quick is the nickname for the fingernail skin, AKA hypocotium. So when you're cutting it to the quick, you're digging up someone's fingernails. In its simplest form, denailing was done by first constraining the prisoner on whatever tabletop or chair, whatever you got ready to tie a person to. Then metal forceps or pliers, often heated over fire until red hot, grasp each nail at its edge and tear it from its it's nail or toe bed. Okay, Ma, this right here is why I am okay with the fact you never broke my nail biting habit. Unfortunately for me, the other variant of this would have still worked because in version two, they wedge something under the nail first and then hit it inwards to separate the nail from its bed. This was a favored method of the medieval German witch hunters who would dip the wooden skewers in boiling sulfur before wedging them in, which would burn the incredibly sensitive flesh of the underside of the nail. When enough skewers have been driven home to ply each nail loose from the bed, only then is the nail torn from the root with a pair of pliers. Okay, one and done. Let's hit number nine, which is stocks. And just like the stock market, it's scary and confusing that people involved are sitting on their ass. Sorry, the joke was there, I had to go for it. So, stock is both physical torment and public humiliation, the best of uh, both types of medieval punishments. Okay, so you know that thing where they bend you over and they put your head and your wrists in it like this, as seen in the beautiful period piece, Shrek? The stocks are similar, but for your feet. Difference is, is that a person is placed in the stocks sitting with their legs extended in front of them and their feet are locked into place. Sometimes their hands or their head might be chained for funsies too, but overall they're left lying on the ground or if they're lucky they have something under their butt. Stocks could be found in the most public places available where a town crier would come out shaking that big ass bell and telling the board masses they could contribute to punishing offenders against the standard of conduct of the time, aka free for all. See this defenseless person literally lying on the ground having an existential crisis because all they did was have a pimple that looked kind of like a witch spot and now their feet are in a Lego block? Get some repressed unacknowledged feelings out. Feel free to berate, attack, spit, kick, urinate, defecate, or even violate the man or woman in their immovable state. This was super popular among civil authorities in medieval times and was at its peak use during the Elizabethan England and the Spanish conquistadors tormenting those in the new world who fought back against Christianization. It was not uncommon for people to be kept in stocks for several days to die of hypothermia or heat stroke. Number eight is the Catherine Wheel, which was named after St. Catherine of Alexandria, who wasn't ever actually killed on one of these, but the fictitious story stuck and so did the name. So medieval France and Germany love this bad boy, which was essentially a giant cartwheel put on a lazy Susan. Folks would be stretched out on it and then tied down, then quite literally became a wheel of fortune because ideally the dude wielding the massive hammer taking swings at you while you slowly spin in a circle gets dizzy and misses. More often than not though, folks ain't that lucky. This wheel would be spun nice and slow over the hours and the hammer wielder would break different limbs as they circled past him. Once all the limbs were reduced to spiky bone fragment skin slabs, oh, sorry, but the person was left on the wheel to die. It could take hours, even days before shock and dehydration did its course. If your offense was less severe or you could bribe someone or you were at least well liked, the first blow would be to the neck in hopes of smoking you quickly. Known as coup de AKA blows of mercy. Otherwise they went from the feet up baby and the number of sequences of blows are specified in the court sentence. How as a lady did you earn the Catherine's wheel? Cheating, witchcraft, treason. Next up for number seven is the piquette. The perfect device for your DIY executioner. All you need is a stake, a hole in the ground to stick it out of, some rope and a little bit of friendship. It was usually used as a military punishment. However, the piquette did make its rounds even ending up in a famous illustration of a woman being subjected to it during the French Revolution. All right, so what you need to pick up from your Hobby Lobby or your Michael's Craft Store is a stake. You're gonna stick one end of it in the ground and then the exposed end facing upwards. Make sure to grab a saw and sandpaper because you're gonna need that exposed end to be sharpened to a rounded point, not a pointy point. Now grab some rope and your malefactor who is typically a soldier who had disobeyed order or a woman accused of witchcraft or sleeping around. You're gonna use that rope to suspend them from the tree by this region of the thumb while the sole of their opposite bare foot was balanced on top of the 
steak. The point of the steak was sharp enough to jab into the arch uncomfortably, but not enough to pierce your foot. Want to get the pressure off? You have to regulate all your body weight into the thumb that's suspending you. And yes, you may be thinking, wouldn't that tear your thumb from its socket? Absolutely, which is why you'd shift your weight back onto the painful foot. Pretty ingenious methodology, if you ask me. Nobody died, but some people did lose thumbs. Better than your life, though. This is a classic mention on our channel. Number six is the shame masks. If they tried to use those on us today, I personally don't think it'd work. The way that pride and ego function in modern days is so different from olden times, but back then, I guess it must have been an efficient humiliation tactic for them to have so many of these horrible masks. That, or people really vibe with the Halloween vibe. These masks, as mentioned, are meant to humiliate, and I guess there's nothing more humiliating than being compared to a pig or a rooster. Two of their most common designs. Some would have a pig snout, bird beak, devil horns, donkey ears. Bells are sometimes attached to attract the attention to the wearer, or even whistles attached to the mouthpiece, so anytime they breathe, the stupid thing would make a sound like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz was approaching. Although less vicious than many other torments, they could still be painful and distressing, especially if your sentence is a long one. The mask can make it difficult to eat, drink, sleep and could attract violence from hostile people or lecherous men. They were used as punishments for various misdemeanors, but usually it was to shut a woman up, literally. You scolded your husband, that's a serious sin that contravened the Bible's clear instructions for wives to remain subservient, little, well, I was gonna say Barbie dolls, but maybe after the movie, it's Ken's. Number five is also used to shut wives and women up. It's the shrews, fiddle, and fife. But I could be wrong. It could be pronounced fife like the country or thief like thief. Cannot tell for the life of me. Anyways, you've heard the boring shrews scold a hundred times. I'm here to bring you a new exciting product if you wanna publicly shame some women, but also simultaneously make it look like they're starting Medieval Times most vibing jazz band. The shrews fiddle or shame fiddle was a wooden contraption shaped roughly like a fiddle, or a fife, or a fief, or whatever it is, which is a type of flute that acted like a portable stalks for your fingers and your neck. The shame flute was specifically designed to punish those who made bad music. However, these shrews implements are titled after the ladies that were tossed in them constantly, people who spoke up to their husbands or argued with one another. The next four titles on this list, I'm not kidding, are all rippers of some kind. We're gonna start with number four, the chest ripper. If I instinctually put my hands on my chest while we're talking, you will understand why in a second. This was a device made specifically and only for women to destroy a very specific aspect of femininity and thus remove what the medieval people perceived to be her desirability. And man, did these dudes have a weird ass fixation on doing stuff to breasts. Burned, brand, carved, or simply amputated. This is called sensual torture, but swap the N and the S for the letter X. It extends back to the time of ancient Rome and likely long before then too, but worst of all was a device coined in medieval England known as the breast ripper, a metal claw that pierced the flesh of the breast of the victim who was tied down and then pulled away forcibly, shredding it to pieces. It was used as both a method of punishment to mark breasts of unmarried mothers and women convinced of heresy, adultery, and hosts of other crimes, but also for interrogation because nothing is gonna make someone confess to being a witch faster than a sociopath with a giant pair of tongs. Number three is a rear ripper. It's unlikely, but if there was anything worse than the breast ripper, it's probably the pair of anguish. Recognizable now from video games and movies and leather bedrooms with red latex accents, this pear-shaped device was one of the many horrific devices that made it to the modern world, but was reborn with better purposes. A few medical devices have taken a page out of its book, such as the dreaded ch ch thing they use at gynecology appointments, and some birthing and colonoscopy gear. So, the pear is made up of four leaves. These are joined at the hinge at the top and a key or a crank on one end. As you can see on screen, it's named accordingly. The pear was inserted into one of the three viable orifices, two if it's a dude, depending on the nature of the crime committed. The oral device was reserved for heretics, while the back door and the middle door pairs were used on, you could never guess. Witches, witchcraft, ooh. Man, medieval times must have looked like the set of Halloween Town, the way that witchcraft is constantly referenced. Anyways, turning the key open the leaves and every little click click of the key causes massive internal damage that was rarely fatal, but very thorough way to get a confession out of someone, or just about any I'm pretty sure the average person would admit to something as ludicrous as riding a magic donkey out of the king's palace if it meant that would stop. Number two is another rear ripper. Yeah, they liked those. Come to think of it, for such a sensually repressed society, they seem to get quite raunchy with their punishments. It's almost like that's the reason you shouldn't repress feelings like that. The Judas Cradle, also known as the Gilded Cradle, was a regular stool with a wooden or metal pyramid on the top. The victim would be stripped, 
tied with ropes on all four limbs, and then like some elaborate marble movie set up behind the scenes, they get lifted into the air and suspended just over top of the pyramid. Then their bits are adjusted to sit right on top of the pyramid. From here, the captive holder could torment them further, try to get confessions, whatever, before letting loose more and more of the person's own body weight, which would slowly impale them downwards on the pyramid, which in turn would start making room for itself. This punishment method was frequently used in the Inquisition, but I invite you to guess when else. Could it be A, witchcraft, uh, B, witchcraft, or C, witchcraft? If you guessed any of those three, you're right, because pretty much every medieval punishment for a woman was because she talked too much or made a soup that tasted too good, so the devil must have done it. All right, the last one our little ripping montage. Number one is the rail rip, AKA a wooden horse, also known as riding the rail. It's an eft device of which there are two variations. The first is like a balance beam from gymnastics, but triangular, mounted on a sawhorse-like support. The victim is made to straddle the triangular horse and place their full body weight down on the hoo-ha area, which rested on the blunt point of the angle. Weights and additional restraints were added to keep the victim from falling off, but also to drag them down. Left for days, it can begin destroying your pelvis, as well as dislocate all of the joints in your legs. A less immediately painful variation is a single plank of wood supported, again, with the wooden legs or sometimes suspended from the ceiling, horizontal from the floor on its side with a thin edge and sharpened extremely. The victim is made to straddle the plank, which is adjusted to their height so that they have to stand on their tiptoes or let their hoo-ha, meet a very serrated fate. This wasn't a witchcraft one, ironically, but rather for adulterers, working girls, or women who breathed a little too hard and their husbands wanted them gone. All right, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in once more. Be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more from us, and until next time, drop some love in the comments. Have a good one.